This is the KM Ekranoplan. KM meaning prototype. The KM was a massive low-flying craft that flew barely 60 feet over the water. The Akrana plan was the brainchild of Rostislav Alexeyev, a brilliant and visionary hydrofoil designer who'd long dreamed of boats that flew. Alexeyev dazzled Khrushchev with the military potential of his ideas and was given a green light to build one of the largest flying machines the world had ever seen. Alexeyev was a pioneer in the development of hydrofoils. Alexeyev proposed what would be a technological marvel, a fleet of enormous flying ships that would exploit some of the most revolutionary aerodynamic theories. Alexeyev's solution was to put massive engines at the front of the fuselage. Their powerful exhausts would be blown under the wings, creating a temporary hovercraft. As speed increased, the entire ship would lift out of the water and ground effect would take over. After six years of costly development, the KM was rolled out of its hangar in Gorky and sent down the river Volga to its testing site on the Caspian Sea. On October the 11th, 1966, it made its first flight. Dmitry Garbuzov and Vitaly Peshinov were the pilot and co-pilot. Alexeyev sat between them, controlling the engine. The eight front engines roared to life, propelling the KM forward and out of the water. At 540 tons, it was 150 tons heavier than the future Boeing 747 and larger than a B-52. The tail was five stories high. It was by far the biggest and heaviest creation ever to take off. The first flight was a resounding success and hopes ran high for the KM's military applications. Later tests proved it could fly at more than 400 miles an hour. There were no press announcements of the KM's maiden flight, or any other Ikranoplan flight. Everything about it was hidden behind an impenetrable veil of secrecy. Because it was amphibious, it could land directly on enemy shores. But with regard to the condition of the sea, tide, underwater obstacles or mines. The second was the loom, which travelled at 300 miles an hour. It was designed to carry anti-ship missiles that could attack American carrier task forces.
Tower from Rotodyne, take off clearance, please. Rotodyne from Tower, you're clear to go. Roger, Rotodyne taking off now. For up-to-date travel, the ferry Rotodyne will revolutionize medium-range air transport, flying direct from city center to city center. The Rotodyne, the world's first vertical takeoff airliner. Large payload, good cruising speed, low operating costs, equal to any modern fixed-wing aircraft, these are the essential requirements that the Rotodyne fulfills. All this, remember, coupled with the ability to take off and land vertically on a site little bigger than the aircraft itself. The first takeoff in November 1957. Control was excellent. For these first flights, the aircraft operated with a very stiff, non-retracting undercarriage. The first flight was planned to consist only of hovering trials. In fact, the pilot was so pleased with the way the aircraft handled that he completed a circuit of the airfield on the first day. Then he attempted a mere 35 miles an hour. And for the first 69 flights, the aircraft was flown as a pure helicopter with power on the rotor. After this successful stage, the transition to autogyro was completed and a further 105 flights were carried out, during which period the handling, stability and rotor stresses were investigated. This work culminated in the Rotodyne setting up a new world speed record of 191 miles an hour in cruising conditions. This is far in excess of the top speed of conventional helicopters. Yet the Rotodyne retains all the advantages of vertical takeoff. A payload of up to 70 passengers or 18,000 pounds of freight can be carried in complete safety and in all weathers. Even in the event of failure of one engine, the aircraft can continue its flight to the most exacting requirements of the civil air authorities. For landing, the tip jets are relit. Heliport from Rotodyne, joining for landing. Transition completed. Roger, Rotodyne, you're clear to land. Surface wind 270, 22 knots. The Rotodyne is a bold design concept with accent on safety, reliability and easy maintenance. The vertical takeoff capability is achieved not by radical departure, but as a logical development of existing helicopter experience. The ferry Rotodyne is the aircraft for fast, economical travel, offering the advantages of air transport to everyone, everywhere. The upper fin of the X-15 extends through a notch in the trailing edge of the B-52 wing. But the flaps of the B-52 cannot be used for takeoff or landing. The ground support vehicles are soon left behind as the B-52's speed rapidly increases. On a hot day, more than 12,000 feet of runway is required to achieve liftoff at 170 to 180 knots. Snugly tucked in the X-15 cockpit, Pilot is no doubt recalling the good old days before wing mounting, when he had to squeeze into the cockpit down through the bomb bay. This maneuver was accompanied by considerable huffing and puffing, and a big sigh of relief when he was finally strapped in the seat. Nothing to do now but sit back, relax, and mentally help the B-52 pilot with his flying. Wing mounting of the X-15 permits the ejection seat to be utilized in an emergency while the aircraft is still attached to the B-52 shackles. The launch checks continue as the pilot tests the attitude control rocket. The high altitude control system used when the X-15 is on an altitude flight profile above the usable atmosphere. At extremely high altitudes, the conventional aerodynamic control surfaces are not sufficiently responsive for complete flight control. No attitude control rockets are necessary. Pitch and yaw rockets are located in the nose. Roll rockets are located on each wingtip. 
The underside of the X-15 is now building up a coating of frost on the outside of the liquid oxygen tank due to the intense cold of the liquid oxygen at a temperature of minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The auxiliary power units are now started. Note the exhaust trail going over the horizontal stabilizer. Launch. Light roll-off occurs with a shackle release. The X-15 engine is started and the aircraft accelerates rapidly, quickly leaving the B-52 far behind. On this flight, the plan called for a buildup of 1,500 pounds per square foot of dynamic pressure before pull-up. Again the launch, photographed by X-15 camera number one. Note the rapid acceleration as the aircraft drops away from the B-52 and the steep climb out angle. Speed brakes are extended to permit longer burning time of the engine propellants and provide added aircraft stability during re-entry. Peak altitude of 317,000 feet planned for this flight is now achieved. X-15 camera number five shows the pilot's reaction to zero G state. Camera number six shows the control panel and the weightless condition. Note the pages on the pilot's flight checklist. The planned peak altitude accomplished. The aircraft starts on the downhill side of the parabola. As the descent angle increases, the horizon gradually disappears out of the picture. Now the pullout to level flight, and the horizon once again is seen behind the tail of the aircraft. The pilot banks the X-15 to visually judge for himself the landing site relative to his position. The speed brakes close and the pilot guides the aircraft into an approach pattern for a landing on Rogers Dry Lake. Residual propellants are jettisoned prior to landing to relieve the aircraft of all excess weight. The lower portion of the vertical fin, which extends below the landing gear and would consequently dig in on touchdown, is jettisoned with a recovery parachute attached. At a pattern speed of 300 knots, the pilot reserves the extension of the landing gear and flaps to avoid drag increase until the landing is reasonably well assured. Because the main landing skids are located far back in the fuselage, the pilot cannot hold the nose up on touchdown resulting in a rather jarring contact of the nose gear to the ground. Touchdown is made at a sinking speed of approximately two feet per second and a forward velocity of 200 miles per hour. The average slide out distance is 5,000 to 6,000 feet. Brakes are not necessary with this landing gear configuration as the skid ground contact serves to slow down the aircraft. 